temporary guardianships for people that might be, you know, traveling, which might happen a lot now, you know, who knows if someone's been visiting and they have to stay in a particular part of the country with a family member or something like that. Yeah. Temporary guardians. That, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Have, have you seen those before, Anna, the temporary guardians? We've talked about them a little bit. I haven't personally had to do one. Uh, that's something I copied from California. So I'm a California attorney, Arizona and Nevada. And the nice thing about studying in all those places is I can compare the laws. If there's things that I um, see that one state does really well, then I can maybe adapt it for, for another state. So in California, they have a statute, how you can define a short-term guardian. So a person to, to be in charge of your kids until the full-time or the long-term guardian is appointed. This is really important for people when all their family lives out of the country. You know, if all their closest family members are out of the country, if something were to happen to them and their guardian is, you know, a whole country away, who's going to serve and who's going to take care of the kids in the short term. Mm -hmm. So we can designate that. Now, California has a clear statute. I, I look for this in Arizona. They don't have a clear way to do it. So I started, I started interviewing people. I started in interviewing first responders. Another thing I love about my job, I get to meet people from all different types of places. So whatever the, the topic that I'm into at that time, I end up picking anyone's brain who, who knows something about it. We have a lot of police officers and first responders. So I was interviewing them like, hey, what would you guys do in the situation? You know, if there's, if there's an accident and there, there's children, what do you do with the children? The answer I got from a few different people was basically they, um, they don't want to put their kids in the system, you know, in the foster care and, and those things unless they have to. So if there's something that's giving them guidance on where to place the kids without getting sued, basically, is what it comes down to. So if we have a legal document that shows what those person's wishes are, they said that they would enforce that. So Yeah, that's, that's neat. It's so something that's definitely to think about when you have people that, you know, family members, especially both of my husband's family and my family, we have family members in different countries. And it's good to know that if you have things like that in place, you know, that they'll be honored that until the person that can be put in place permanently is available, you know, that you can. Yeah. Have the other thing that people might be considering right now is if they're traveling or if they're sending their kids to travel with someone else is mm -hmm. you can do a short term power of attorney, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that you give someone the temporary rights. So I guess that'd be more of a temporary power of attorney for right. parental rights. Mm -hmm. which Arizona does have a statute that says how you can do that. So if you're sending your kids or if, or if you're going out of the country and you're leaving your kids at home with a babysitter, mm -hmm. it's a good idea to give some of the authority to be able to act for your children. For like doctors, emergencies, things like that, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll, we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.